Hey everyone, so I made a little animation that describes and shows how the action potential occurs in a neuron or in the axon of a neuron. And um, I learned quickly that making this animation takes about 20 times longer than drawing it out on the board, but hopefully this will be helpful. So what you see on the screen here is imagine that we've got a neuron, okay, or a piece of an axon of a neuron. This gray region, that represents the axon, so everything in gray is inside the axon, and everything in white represents the extracellular fluid, which is outside of the axon, okay? So imagine a situation where inside the axon there's a high density of potassium ions. And potassium is here shown in blue, and it has a positive charge. So you've got a bunch of potassium in blue on the inside of the axon, and then you've got a bunch of sodium that has a high density on the outside of the axon. So a bunch of potassium on the inside, not much potassium on the outside, the exact opposite for sodium. A bunch of sodium on the outside and just a little bit of sodium on the inside. And the crazy thing is, is that the cell wants to move more potassium from outside to in and more sodium from inside to out because that's exactly opposite of what diffusion would dictate for these ions. So diffusion, again, is just the process in which an ion spreads out from high concentration to low concentration. This happens passively. That would predict that sodium would want to enter the cell. The, the axon wants to do the exact opposite. It wants to move more sodium from inside to out and more potassium from outside to in. That's going to take energy if the cell is going to accomplish this because it's against their concentration gradients. To accomplish this, the cell has a sodium potassium pump. This is a protein which consumes ATP, and when it does this, it's going to move sodium out and potassium in. Okay, so the cell has this pump which is moving more sodium out and more potassium in. Now it's worth talking about the charge or the voltage that exists inside this axon. Here I'm going to do a chart and this just shows the voltage that exists inside the axon over time. Now right now let's consider that the voltage is pretty much neutral right around zero. Or this charge is right around zero. We've got positive things on the in inside, positive things on the outside. There's also some negatively charged ions like chlorine that aren't shown, but everything's pretty much balanced. But there's a problem here. This cell membrane that makes up the axon is slightly permeable to potassium, which means that potassium will leak across the cell membrane if it could. And in this case, it can, right? So because the cell membrane is slightly permeable to potassium, potassium is going to diffuse outside of the axon, and that's exactly what it does. Well, as potassium leaks out, this is going to have a pretty dramatic effect on the charge inside the axon. When we have these positively charged potassium ions leaving, that's going to cause the charge inside the axon to drop. And it drops all the way down to negative 90, okay, as potassium continues and continues to leave. Around negative 90, the negative charge inside the axon is so extreme that it starts to pull and kind of hold these potassium ions inside so that around negative 90, it stops dropping. Now, this cell membrane is also slightly permeable to sodium as well, but it's not nearly as permeable to sodium as it is potassium. So only a little bit of sodium is gonna leak across the membrane and it's gonna leak from outside to in. So just a little bit of sodium is gonna leak in. As these positively charged ions leak in, that's also gonna have an effect on the charge. It's gonna cause the charge to go up a little bit, positive things coming in, it's gonna cause an increase in charge and it's going to cause it to go up to about negative 70. Now everything is pretty much balanced. It's a pretty dynamic situation, but everything's pretty much balanced. You've got potassium leaking out, sodium leaking in, and you've got the sodium potassium pump, pumping more sodium out, pumping more potassium in. It's almost like a leaky boat. You know, let's say you went fishing and you barred your friend's boat and there's a big hole in it. Water's leaking in, kind of like these ions leaking across the membrane. In order to stay afloat, you're just bailing water out, getting it back where you want it to go, okay? This takes a lot of energy to keep this boat afloat, but that's exactly what's going on. This 
negative 70 charge that's maintained as these ions leak across and the sodium potassium pump is, is pumping the ions back across the membrane. This is called the resting potential. And it's important to note that every neuron in your body is undergoing, is, is undergoing this pumping process to maintain the resting potential when they're relaxed. So this is happening in every neuron in your body at all times when the neuron's not firing. And it's required in order for this neuron to be able to fire. This resting potential must be established in order for the neuron to fire, okay? So let's talk about what happens when this neuron does fire. After this resting potential, this negative 70 is established, the neuron can fire. And in order to talk about this, we need to talk about a different set of proteins that exist in the cell membrane. These guys in orange are sodium voltage gated channels, okay? Let's think about their name. It's a sodium channel, which means that only sodium can pass through when it's open. Voltage gated, this means that the voltage in the surrounding environment or the voltage inside the axon is going to determine whether he's closed or open. At the resting potential at negative 70, these sodium voltage gated channels are closed, okay? But there's a magic voltage called the threshold voltage right here at negative 55. If the axon, the voltage in the axon goes up to negative 55, these sodium voltage gated channels will open. And let's say that's exactly what happens. Let's say the voltage goes up and reaches this threshold. That's going to cause the sodium voltage gated channels to open. When that happens, that's going to allow sodium to pass through these channels if it wants to. Now, sodium is going to really want to pass through for two different reasons. Number one, diffusion is going to predict that sodium enters the axon as it goes from high concentration to low concentration. But also the charge inside the axon right now is negative 55. Sodium has a positive charge. Positive and negative things are attracted. So all of these sodium ions are gonna fly into the axon itself. As this happens, we have this influx of positively charged sodium ions is gonna cause the voltage inside the axon to shoot up all the way up to positive 30. After a few brief milliseconds, these sodium voltage channels are gonna automatically close, right? But there's another voltage gated channel that exists in the cell membrane. These are potassium voltage gated channels that will only allow potassium to close. So right after a couple of milliseconds when this voltage reaches positive 30, the sodium channels close and at the same time the potassium voltage gated channels open. These potassium channels responded to the same threshold voltage, they just opened with a little bit of a delay and it ha they happen to open right when the potassium channels close or right when the sodium channels close. So these potassium channels are now open, potassium can move through if they want to, and potassium is definitely gonna wanna move through. It's gonna wanna leave the cell as it goes from, the potassium goes from high concentration to low concentration, and we have this uh, electrical gradient which is further gonna drive the movement of potassium. You have a positive charge inside the axon right now of positive 30. Potassium also has a positive charge which is gonna repel those ions outside of the cell, okay? As this happens, the charge inside the axon is now going to drop all the way down to negative 70. At the same time, these potassium channels are gonna close. Some of these potassium channels are gonna be slow to move, slow to close, so potassium is gonna continue to leak out, which is gonna cause hyperpolarization right here. But eventually, all these potassium channels will fully close, now we have the sodium potassium pumps, which have been there all along. They're gonna, con they're gonna start pumping the sodium back out of the cell, the potassium back in, getting everybody where they need to go in the first place, and that's gonna reestablish the resting potential, okay? This curve, where we have a depolarization as the sodium channels open, a repolarization as the potassium channels open, and a hyperpolarization as the, the potassium channels are slow to close, this is called the action potential. Now, this only exists in one region of the axon, but this action potential will travel down the length of the axon because voltage spreads out. Let's kind of go back to our original situation. Let's say that an action potential only occurs on the left-hand side of the axon. That's gonna cause the voltage in this area to shoot up briefly to positive 30. 
Well, voltage is just kind of like heat. It's going to spread out through a fluid. You're not going to have one area of the axon that has positive 30 and the next little area right next to him be at negative 70. This action potential that occurs on the left hand side of the screen is going to cause the voltage to slightly elevate in the region of the axon right next door. Well, it's going to slightly elevate to the threshold voltage. And when that happens, these sodium channels are going to open. Action potential causes the voltage to go up to positive 30, which is going to bring the sodium channels right next door to threshold. And this is going to cause that action potential to fly down the action potential, slide on the axon like a chain reaction. Okay? And in a nutshell, that's really kind of how the action potential works. A couple more things about the action potential. Remember that it's always the same size for a given neuron and it only always travels at the same speed. The only way that a neuron can encode the strength of a signal is by the, through the frequency of action potentials. By firing in rapid succession, a high frequency of action potentials is a way that a neuron can um, tell the cell the postsynaptic cell that it is a stronger uh, stimulus. All right, so hopefully this helps. You know, um, I know the animation took me forever to complete. It's a lot easier to draw it out, but hopefully it helps you understand um, this concept. So thank you.